Hi everyone, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about Curly Girl Method friendly conditioners. Um, they're all silicone free and before I get started I just want to explain a little bit about the order of the products that you use in the Curly Girl Method. Um, it's the same as before you did the Curly Girl Method, it's cleanse, condition, and style. Um, except for you're not using sulfates and silicone, so step one for cleansing is co-wash or low poo, which is sulfate free shampoo. It's your choice. Um, if you're curlier, you might want to co-wash more often or mostly co-wash. And then step two is condition like you did before, but this conditioner in the curlical method, we call it the rinse out conditioner because you rinse it all the way out and then you're going to style. So when you pick your rinse out conditioner, you're going to want a more moisturizing conditioner for that or else you're going to be a dry and frizzy. You can't really use something that you would use to co-wash with for your rinse out conditioner if you are a drier curly or a frizzier curly and have good results. So I'm going to get started and the order of the conditioners I'm going to show you are going to be least moisturizing to most moisturizing. And before I get started I need to tell you a little bit about porosity because it affects the conditioners that you pick. I have high porosity hair because it has been bleached and blow fried, strained a lot, and um, that opens up your cuticles. So um, your hair is normally like a closed pine cone. Um, mine is high porosity, so like if it was healthy hair, this these scales on the outside would be closed down, but this is a dried out pine cone that has fallen from the tree. So it's like my hair, it's open, it can't retain moisture, the moisture's coming. Imagine the moisture being inside the pine cone and moisture's coming out easily. So my hair absorbs moisture well, but it also releases moisture well. So I need heavier emollients, oils, and shea butter to seal down this cuticle. If you are um, low porosity, your, your cuticle's already smoothed down, the scales would be lying flat. So you need humectants, which will draw moisture into the hair. So just keep that in mind as I'm talking to you about the conditioners. And someday I'll make a porosity video and I'll link it in the description box. Um, but you do need to know a little bit about, about your porosity to help you pick products. But now I'll get into the conditioners. Okay, so the first conditioner I have is something that I would only consider to for myself to co-wash with because it's not very moisturizing at all and if I use this as a rinse out I will just be dry and frizzy. It's the VO5 so for me that's not good. Um, same thing with the Suave Naturals if I use this as a rinse out I'm gonna be dry and frizzy. It's not enough. I can add it to more moisturizing conditioners but it's just not enough. It's a co-wash for me or a refresher Next, I have um, this Tresemme Naturals. I consider it a moderate level moisturizer. If you start the Curly Girl Method and you don't know which conditioner to buy, I try this one because it's in the middle. It can be for any hair type. Um, for me, it's moderately low moisturizing, um, moderately low moisture. Um, and I think that. It's an awesome conditioner because you can co-wash with it. If you're drier, you can use it for deep conditioning. If you add things into it, it's cheap. And you can use it as a rinse out and work your way up if you need. Um, I definitely had to work my way up. I have this Trader Joe's, which I think a lot of low porosities like the Tresemme Naturals and the Trader Joe's. Um, it's not enough for me, like I said, but this one is the uh, tea tree tingle. I like it a lot for co-washing because the tea tree really gives your scalp a nice refreshing feeling, almost like using shampoo or even sulfate shampoo. It's like, it's just this nice refreshing cleansing feeling. Um, it's not enough moisture as a rinse out for me. Um, but all these lower moisturizing ones, I add to other things. And I, I do use them still, and I refresh with them, so they're not a total loss for me. Um, 
Then I have this Yes to Carrots. If you want a natural one, this is great. It's kind of pricey, but the ingredients are awesome. If you're low porosity, you'd probably consider this very moisturizing. Um, it's moderate level, more than the other ones. Um, it's okay on me. And then I have this EO one from TJ Maxx. $10 for this big bottle, um, all natural. It's pretty good and it's pretty moisturizing more than all the other ones. So I would say moderate to moderately high on me. Um, medium high somewhere in there. But it has a lot of coconut oil as one of the number ones number one ingredients. So if you don't like that, it might not work for you. But I, I think it's really nice. I just spike it with a little Shea Moisture. <laughs> and um, like I add a little bit of this and it's perfect. In my hand, I add both and just mix it and I use both. But if you're low porosity and you try Tresemme Naturals and it's not enough, or, like, if you don't know which conditioner to get, I would first get this Tresemme Naturals. And then I would get this GVP Generic Conditioning Balm. Um, it's a knockoff from the Matrix Biolage Conditioning Balm. And if this still isn't enough moisture for you, you probably are high porosity. And you're going to need to go to Shea Moisture. But these are inexpensive. This is only, like, $6 at Sally's. So, this is high moisture. Um... It's high moisture on me, but it doesn't have enough emol emollients or shea butter to seal my hair down and trap the moisture in. It has propylene gly glycol, which is a humectant, and it has moisturizing alcohols and some extracts, which draw the moisture. These ingredients will draw the moisture into the hair, but not hold on to it. But if you're low porosity, this is probably going to be your cheapest holy grail that you can find. Um as a rinse out but I do use this a lot because when I mix it with the Shea Moisture it's just like this perfect mix and um, this has great slip and detangle glow whereas the Shea Butter in the Shea Moisture doesn't really have a lot of slip so for detangling I like to add this but if I don't use it and I just use the Shea Moisture I'm fine but um the next one is this Tahitian Noni Shea Moisture one. If you're low porosity, these Shea Moisture products have a lot of Shea Butter in them. So that can actually just, if your hair is like the pine cone and your scales are sealed down, it will, the Shea Butter is heavy so it's just going to sit on the outside of the hair and just weigh it down and tr block moisture from absorbing into the hair. On some low porosities it does that. So you may have to clarify more or might not be able to use Shea Moisture. You might be able to deep condition with it. Um, but you just have to be careful and you just have to try it for yourself. But I just have noticed this being a trend for a lot of people. Um, this is probably the least moisturizing of the Shea Moisture ones in me. But it has protein so I just love protein. My hair loves it because it's bleached and it was heat damaged. Um, not severely or else the curl wouldn't return, but just, so, you know, from straightening and stuff. And so this one is good for protein. And um, the next moisturizing one, I actually kind of think these two are kind of the same level. Um, what I do to stretch them is I add a little cheapo conditioner to them. <laughs> Um, actually I add this giant, I got this giant gallon size version of silicon free conditioner at Sally's and I add some to these and I shake them up and it stretches them because my hair needs a lot of conditioner and I would totally use Shea Moisture and that's it but it's very expensive to use the amount that I need. So then after that, um, the most moisturizing rinse out is this one. And I love this one. It's my holy grail for high porosity hair. And if my hair is still really dry feeling. What should happen is when you put your rinse out in, your hair should feel like seaweed. And if it feels rough and dry still, you need to be adding something else. And you need to be adding more of it. Um, <laughs> so if my hair is still dry, I will add some of, some of this as a rinse out. Or I'll deep condition with this just 5 or 10 minutes in the shower. And a trick for me 
is I wring my hair out um, in the shower after I co-wash like this and then I'll, well, actually go like this and wring it all the way out. And then I add my rinse out and I usually rinse it all the way out because I had some buildup issues on my scalp and it was getting a little itchy feeling and it's because I used so much shea butter that it was building up a lot so I had to low poo more often so I've been having better luck just rinsing it all the way out. But yeah, these Shea Moisture masks, if I need more moisture, I will use them as a rinse out. This is the most moisturizing and this one's in the middle. Um, if you're low porosity, I don't know if this will work for you, but some low porosities can use this one and have no trouble if they low poo it out. Um, if you need protein and you have like bleached hair, this this is really nice. But um, yeah, I've been really enjoying this giant gallon size version of silicon free conditioner for like $8 from Sally's because um, it has honey and almond oil and propylene glycol. So, um, like I said, it's awesome to add to the expensive conditioners and stretch them. And this one is not super moisturizing on me, but it has great slip. So adding it to the Shea Moisture is really helping with um, detangling. And the last one that I have is my own homemade concoction. And what I do is I add a little bit of Suave Naturals. I add a little bit of this one. I add a little bit of Shea Moisture. I add a little bit of this. I add a little bit of the GPP Conditioning Balm. The cheap, bigger ones plus the Shea Moisture because the Shea Moisture, if I don't have this, it's just not going to be moisturized on me. And then I've been adding a little, spiking it with sunflower oil. And you can add oils to any of your conditioners if you need to make them more moisturizing. And I've been even adding grapeseed oil too. And I'm going to start doing a little olive oil too to see how that goes. But I mix them all up and I've been spiking it with a little gelatin because um, the protein in it, my hair really likes that. And I just mix it up. And this is my ready to go um, conditioner in the shower. To make it simple, just one. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm all about, you know, stretching my conditioner, making it last longer because I have a lot of hair and I like to save a dollar. <laughs> so, I hope, the, this re I hope this review helped you a lot and um, can help you pick some Curly Girl Method conditioners. And I hope that you try it. Bye.